Have you ever wondered how fast a drone you could build with just a bunch of parts you've got lying about on the shelf? Let's find out, shall we? You've probably seen those insane Red Bull high-speed drone videos. I have, and I find them absolutely fascinating. And I think as of 2025, the outright speed record sits at around 580 kph, which is 360 miles an hour, which is just, well, ridiculous. And let's be honest, it's not something most of us could realistically chase. I mean, where do you even get going to fly a drone that fast legally in the UK? You need huge locations, marshals, support crews and all that stuff. And on top of that, those teams are using computational fluid dynamics, temperature sensors, endless component testing. It's incredibly impressive, but it's completely outside the scope of a lone hobbyist, well, like me. I certainly don't have the time, the money, or the patience for any of that. What I do have, though, is boxes of drone parts from old projects, broken builds, crash stuff. And if you've been doing FPV for any length of time, you'll know exactly what I mean. I mean, stuff, well, it just accumulates. So that got me thinking. How fast a drone could I build using mostly what I already own? More specifically, how fast could a drag drone be? What's the 0-60 and the 0-100 mph time? And how long does it take to cover a standing quarter mile? That's something that I can measure properly and safely in a massive local field with no people and no wildlife. So, this is my drag drone. It was a bit of a Frankenstein thing. It took me literally two hours to put it together, mainly because I didn't want to waste any time videoing the build process. But I wanted a proper True X 5 inch racing frame. And I honestly can't remember even buying this or where it came from. But it's very stiff and it's been hanging on my wall around the corner with some old red top Emacs motors on tells you how, how old it is. So I stripped it right back and just reused the frame. Now it's got these big chunky arms, so clearly it's not exactly going to be aerodynamic. Now, when I built my ultimate seven inch drone a few months ago, I used the secure flight controller ESC and motors, and I was particularly impressed with the motors. Secure also very kindly supplied some of these SQFPV 2207 1500 kV motors, a Bluestone A1 70 amp ESC and a matching flight controller. Now these are all 6S compatible but importantly they will also run on 8S which is perfect because I wanted to test both and see which actually performs better. Now this slightly improvised top plate on here and the camera mount is from a Speedy B DJI O3 Air unit module. It's nice and easy to mount so it's sort of like pretty much plug and play. Just needed to drill a few holes in here and put some standoffs on. Well, it's a bit crude but it works. The receiver up front is a Radio Master ELRS crossband and I added a Vifly drone finder on the back here just in case. On the top, this is my Racebox Micro. It's a standalone GPS data logger that I normally use on my RC cars. It logs at 25 hertz and it's got a dedicated drag mode, which is perfect. And it lets me export all that data straight into a spreadsheet so I can analyze it later. Now for the batteries, well, I had these GMB 
12 50 milliamp 6s packs lying around i've got a couple of these um, so i thought i'll use those and these gnb 1300 8s packs that i bought specially for this project it's the only thing i had to buy for this now i've never flown 8s before so this is going to be a bit interesting now if you watch those high speed drone videos you'll notice they nearly all run by played props like this and that makes sense for long sustained you know high speed runs but for maximum acceleration from a standing start i've got this theory that tri blades might work better i mean they work well in racing for fast cornering it's more blade area on it they've got more bite off the line so I tested this using these Gemfan Hurricane 51466 V2 tri-blades, which have got a fair amount of pitch on them. And these things, which I had lying around, they're HEE Wings F015 E bi-blades. And I suspect they will give the battery and the drivetrain a bit of a hard time. But, you know, I didn't want to spend weeks number crunching, hunting for those unicorn props. These are about right, and quite honestly, the data will tell the whole story. If you've never flown 8S before, well, you really need to give it a try. There's just so much power that it's genuinely alarming first time you fly. It punches out incredibly hard, and you've really got to stay ahead of the drone to keep up with it. So the results are in, and they make very interesting reading. I did loads of run across all the battery and prop combinations and I picked the best results from each and there is a lot of data. So along here I've got the data from all four combinations of props and battery. So for example uh, this one here is with the 6S 1250 milliamp with the Gemfam 51466 V2 props. And similarly for the bi-blade with 8S and 6S. Um, I will go through the best one just to show you the values, but I have summarised them over here. So this is the data that's downloaded from the Race Pro, Racebox Pro rather. And there's all sorts of stuff in here, but the important thing is time, distance and speed. And if we look down through here, the things I wanted to know were, what was the 0 to 60 time? Well, we'll take 0 to 61 because that's over 60. That was 0.463 of a second, and it did that in 22, just over 22 feet. And if we come down here, the 0 to 100 time, well, just under 100, 99.7, was 0.875, and it covered that in 71.5 feet. Pretty impressive times, I have to say. Uh, if we go down here, we keep going down, we get to the eighth mile, which is 660 feet. So that's the value there. And it got there in the eighth mile in 3.758 seconds. And the terminal speed was 153 miles an hour. The maximum speed is 153.38. And interestingly, that sort of tails off, which... I can sort of understand, I wasn't expecting it, I thought it'd be a nice progressive curve all the way up to the standing quarter mile time, but this is dying off, and I think that may be that the three blade props are just giving up a little bit, plus the battery's dying a little bit, everything's getting hotter and all that sort of thing. So we come down here to what is 1,320 feet, which is the standing quarter mile. So it did that in 3.74 seconds, and the terminal speed was 149.5 miles an hour. Interesting that that data dies off. So if we look, um, I did similar things with, that's with the 6S, that's with the 8S and the Biblade, and that's with the 6S with the uh by blade but i've summarized all those results into this little table so the best results were in fact the 8s 1300 milliamp hour with the gem fan tri blades 0 to 60 0 0.46 0 to 100 0.87 standing eighth of a mile 3.8 3.75 and the standing quarter mile was 6.745 seconds 
and maximum speed 143 watt terminal speed. And you can see these, these these get slightly slower and slower. We'll put them in order of best at the top and worst at the bottom. So this is a little bit slower, as you can see. The 2S generally didn't perform that well. And obviously 6S, or 8S, is better than 6S. But I noticed an interesting thing here. In that the standing quarter mile with 8S on the by blade, this value here, is actually faster than it was with a success on the tri-blade. Now, again, I think that's possibly because the bi-blades are starting to come into their own as it's building up more speed. The tri-blades are really good for that punch off the line. And I suspect that's just why all those people that are doing high-speed drone runs with over long distances or around a racetrack or down some main street in Dubai or wherever it is they're doing it, they're using bi-blades and that those figures actually back up what they're doing, which is interesting. And then the slowest was the 6S on the by blade. But there's not that much in it, but a fascinating set of results. Now, all this took a good couple of days to capture, and it definitely wasn't smooth sailing. On one run, I threw a prop, and it ploughed straight into the ground at, well, frankly, a ridiculous speed which is exactly why I chose a huge empty field in the first place. Luckily, this little drone finder was on it and it was powered up. And by the time I trunched across that muddy field, it was beeping really loudly. Hilariously, even though this is tiny, I found this very quickly, but because it become ripped off the quad, it took me, well, a good couple of hours of part hunting it was all broken, but everything was fixable. Now, overall, this was a brilliantly fun project and the results were genuinely interesting. These secure motors, flight controller and 70 amp ESC, well, they were spectacular, especially for the money. And I'll put links in the description if you're interested in them. The problem is, I know I can make this faster. This frame with its big old chunky arms is most certainly holding it back aerodynamically. So the question is, have I been bitten by the bug? Am I about to chase diminishing returns by spending stupid money for those marginal gains? Quite honestly, I don't know, but it might be fun finding out and I'll have a think over the next few weeks. If you enjoyed this, a thumbs up really helps. Hit subscribe if you're not already. And let me know in the comments, would you build something like this? Or what would you change to make it faster? Or do you have any high speed drone successes or more importantly failures? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.